Welcome back to another review. I have uh, another flash in for testing the Godox TT350S and this was sent in via Fastic. As per usual everything's laid out on the table but we'll just go over the details in a bit more depth. Here are the specs of the flash. As you can see it's actually quite a well featured flash gun considering it's a compact size. And so you have not only TTL manual and the multi-flash but built-in radio master and slave on this unit which is very unusual at this price point as far as the size goes it's pretty compact it's not the smallest flash gun that i've used but it's certainly significantly smaller than a standard size flash gun i will just peel off the protectors these come on the flash out of the box just to protect the lcd open up the battery compartment. It doesn't feel quite as solid as the rest of the flash body, um, but still re reasonable enough. And that takes two AA batteries. There's your micro USB port for updating the firmware on the flash when they release firmware updates. There's no charge with the uh, Godox units for the firmware updates, though it is Windows only, I believe, at the moment. So decent enough battery cover on that. There's nothing else as far as ports go on this flash, which isn't surprising because it's a small unit. This is a quick look at the multi-interface shoe because this is a Sony version. You have the other hot shoe for the other flashes such as Canon and Nikon. Just make sure that you screw that down to put the retainers in. It's got lugs that come out when you screw it down. Just take off the uh, protector on the back LCD. You can see the controls on this. It's pretty simple. You have the jog dial. There's the set button in the middle. Your pilot light on the left and the four main buttons above that and there's also the power button there on the right hand side not a switch this will just show you the uh, flip out diffuser and the uh, white panel no complaints at all with the mechanism on this they um, come out fairly easily and slot back in firmly so the overall build on this is good don't have too many complaints at all now the rotation on this pretty much standard for a flash gun it's uh, 0 to 270 degrees and it gives you an option to tilt it down a little bit, minus 7, so it can actually just uh, down below the level point, so you can actually push it down a bit and fully up. So, you know, not 360, 360 degrees, but I really never really had a complaint with a flash gun that didn't do the full 360. You just remember to turn it back round again. So it holds position quite nicely. They've got it about right on this. It's not too stiff and it's not too loose. Um, the bigger Godox flash units that I've used tend to be on the stiffer side, uh, perhaps a bit too much, and this one's just about right, I think. So I think they've done a decent job on that side of things. It's not going to move out of position by accident. Give you a visual comparison next to the Sony F20M. It isn't as small, granted, um, but it's still quite a compact unit. And the Sony flash is less power. It runs off of AAA batteries instead of AA and it's much less featured. This is next to a full-size flash. This one's a Metz. I had this for a few years. You can see it's substantially smaller than that flash gun, although obviously the power output isn't going to be nearly as much. You don't obviously get the additional ports on this. There is a lithium-ion version of the uh, 350 flash that's come out recently. I haven't looked at that, but uh, that's an option if you need faster recycle times. Unfortunately, there's no belt loop on the case. For some reason even though it's a decent enough padded case i would have liked to have seen that but i do have you know flash cases myself so i'd recommend uh, getting an extra flash case to carry it on your bag this is the included stand and the case is big enough to fit the flash with the diffuser that's supplied so that fits in perfectly no problems at all there's no effort required really to do that and that's the diffuser a quick close-up look on this now this only fits around one way, you'll see there's a slight angle on it, but it's fairly snug fit. It's nice that they include it. I do use them occasionally. They can diffuse the light a little bit. It's worth having. And this is the flash stand. We do have a brass thread on the bottom, so hopefully that will um, hold up to long-term use versus the plastic ones that you sometimes see. Uh, there's the warranty and your user guide. User guide, I've just touched on that briefly later on. And I will go through the operation now. So you push and hold for about a second to turn it on. You have to push that in for a second. A quick press won't do anything. Then you just single press to turn it on. There you can see your pilot light come on. Switching through the mode, TTL, manual output. And then you just adjust the jog wheel 
to your selected settings it's down to 128th power in third of a stop increments and here's your multi flash or strobe mode and you can again just go through and set the speed and the number of flashes with the set button when you finish just press it again the operation on this I'm pretty happy with really didn't need to use the manual on this at all just follow the buttons and you'll see the ones underneath there longer presses essentially that's all you need to do with that so for example if you are in manual mode you can then select the optical slave s1 has the first flash and s2 fires on the second flash so that's useful if you're using a, a camera that doesn't have a, a, a manual output and it does the ttl push the zoom button you're able to manually adjust the zoom from 24 to 105 millimeters the AU means automatic, that's all that means. Obviously we have a bit less space on the screen so you're not going to get as much detail as you do with the uh, larger flash guns. And now you go into the custom menu. You don't have much options on this. You just have the standby on or off, AF assist on or off and the backlight on or off. So really not too much to see on that. I usually just leave the backlight and the standby in the on position so it will save power if you're not using the flash gun you press the sync button for your high speed sync and if you long press that it takes you into the wireless flash mode this is radio mode you'll see the symbol come up so all you do with that is rotate the dial around and then you can pick m for master s for slave and then go through and select what you want to do, whether you want a manual output, whether you want TTL or whether you want high speed sync. You can also, whether or not you want, if you're using this flash as a master, if you want it to output any power or just actually trigger the flashes. So despite the fact this is a small flash, it actually does quite a lot. Uh, there's virtually, I can't remember any flashes that this price point and size that have that master and slave functionality built into such a compact unit. So there is a lot to like in terms of the features and functionality on this flash. To get out the radio mode, just remember to uh, press the set button when it's flashing up on screen. And you can use the adapter if you're using the older Minolta style hot shoe. Obviously this is a Sony version, so I am actually using the adapter on this camera. And I've got the uh, 685S next to that. Do you need the wireless flash transmitter, the X-Pro? Did a review on that recently. It's a nice unit. The answer is depends if you're going to be using multiple flashes. You can use the uh, TT350 as a master unit at a push, but obviously um, you can see here firing the uh, 685 you have just a single display so you have to cycle through those whereas on the 685 or on the X Pro unit you'll be able to see more of the settings directly on the screen so for example the 685 I can see settings for four um, three groups there and the flash itself so you know really I don't see it as much of a compromise now I will be doing a full review on the 685S in a week or so when I get around to doing that but um, there are obviously pros and cons with a larger unit or a smaller unit. If you push and hold the mode button whilst you turn the power on, that will bring up the firmware version. You can see we're at 1.7, so later on there may be firmware updates for that. I'm just doing a flash recycle test now just to see what the recycle times are, setting it to full power. And I've been finding I've been getting around about three to four seconds recycle time off of this flash gun so it's not as fast as i believe i think i said 2.2 i haven't been able to get that speed uh, with the batteries that i've tested and tried fully charged batteries so it's not a major problem for me but it is something to know it's not quite as fast if i compare this to the f20m the main annoyance with the sony flash is it costs more than the godox and you can't rotate it around really i was um I think this is just designed for the A900 when it came out just to give you a cheap way or cheaper way of getting a master optical flash on the camera which didn't actually have a flash built in so um, it's an okay flash but it's quite limited and you can press the set button and use the jog dial to set the exposure compensation remember this is in conjunction with the camera setting so if you set the camera to minus three and this to plus three they'll cancel each other out so they're cumulative they affect each other just bear that in mind so just use one generally outside the high speed sync has limited range because of the power but it can be of some use so what i would say with that is make sure that you're reasonably close to your subject 
higher shutter speeds you will get less power out of it it's fine for things like a portrait such as i'm showing you here head and shoulders so think portrait shots maybe two or three people but any more than that you're really going to need a bigger flash unit to get the most out of the high speed sync onto the AF assist beam. This won't work on the mirrorless cameras, but I personally find it too bright myself, and it's also not the pattern which we've had on the other Godox units, so it's not as effective, and it can, to be honest with you, be a bit annoying if you've got people, uh, you're taking shots of people, um, they'll find that the light will sort of flash in their eyes, so I think they could have done a better job on that. I'm just putting my hand up to show you just how bright it is. So, you know, that's a bit of a mixed bag on that one. You also get an indication whether or not the uh, flash thinks you've over or underexposed a shot occasionally on the LCD display. It also has a battery warning on there too. I'm doing some fixed exposures now just to demonstrate the power from the built-in flash. Next we have the F20M. So you can see it's a decent step up with that and we get more power out of the TT350. Once you go up to the full size flash unit, the 685 in this case, you can see there is a substantial difference. It's really just to give you an idea of the actual power output of the flashes. Sometimes the specs can vary. This is a quick look at the user guide. It's reasonably okay. There's some translation errors there, but it's not as long as some of the other Godox manuals. So we'll sum up with some thoughts and conclusion. There are a few points that I would change on this flash without question. The AF assist, as I just mentioned, the cycle speeds, not really a huge deal, but it's a bit off spec. There's no built-in speaker or flashing LED either. So when you set it to wireless, but this does offer a lot for the price, particularly in terms of the radio flash built in manual modes and of course the optical off-camera modes which can be useful for mixing it in with other flash units so not too much to complain about and quite a lot to like particularly with the price point it's pretty much got no competition at this level and therefore it's a very easy flash unit to recommend even though there are a few niggles to go with it so thanks for watching the video let me know what you think if you've got one of these and i will catch up with you soon